For any project management in network diagram, we need to identify a time range between which any activity we could start in order to complete the project in expected project completion time. For that, we calculate earliest possible time E and latest allowable time L. To understand this, let us consider a network diagram as shown. Here we have A to K different activities with their expected activity completion time in hours. First, let us know what is earliest possible time. This is the point of time written at event in network diagram. After that only any successor activity can start. To compute this, we go for forward pass computation. In this process, we calculate earliest possible time at head event of any activity by adding earliest possible time at tail event of this activity with its expected completion time. Here i and j are tail event and head event respectively of any activity and teij is expected activity completion time for it. If ei is tail event earliest possible time and ej is head event earliest possible time then ej will be equal to ei plus teij. Now, what if more than one activity will share same head event? Let us consider two activities 1, 3 and 2, 3 having 3 as common head event. In this case, we will calculate earliest possible time at 3 by keeping both the activities in mind. Since after completion of both the activities, only the successor activity could start. Let us say 1, 2, 3 is taking 4 hours and 2, 2, 3 is taking 2 hours. So the successor activity cannot start after 2 hours. The successor activity cannot start after 3 hours. But the successor activity can start after 4 hours only. Because before 4 hours, activity 1, 2, 3 will be in process and we will have to wait for it. So in this example, earliest possible time at 3 will be 4 hours. That means if more than one activity sharing same head event, Calculate earliest possible time at head event by considering it for individual activity and maximum one will be our correct value. Now let's move to our network diagram. Very first step is compute the earliest possible time at first event and it will be zero since there is no any activity before it and it is independently free to start. Now for event two, since it is head event of activity A and it has expected activity completion time as 4 hours. So E2 will be equal to E1 plus 4 that is 0 plus 4 equal to 4 hours. Similarly at event E which is head event of activity B. So E3 will be equal to E1 plus 1 that is 0 plus 1 that is equal to 1. Now at event 4, E4 will be equal to E2 plus 6 that is equal to 10. Next is event 5 which is common head event of activity C and D. So value of E for it will be maximum from E2 plus 1 and E3 plus 1. That means maximum from 4 plus 1 and 1 plus 1. And the answer is 5. Hence earliest possible time at event 5 will be 5 hours. Similarly at event 6 which is common head event of activity G and F E6 will be maximum from E3 plus 5 and E5 plus 4, which is 9. In the same way, we can calculate it at event 7, 8 and 9 and we'll get E7 equal to 18, E8 equal to 19 and E9 equal to 21. Let us show all this on network diagram. So here we have completed the computation of earliest possible time on the network diagram. Now let us know what is latest allowable time. This is the point of time written at event in network diagram. After that any successor activity can't be delayed in order to complete the project in expected project completion time. To calculate this we need to go for backward pass computation. In this process latest allowable time at tail event of any activity is calculated by subtracting expected activity completion time with latest allowable time at head event of this activity. 
Now, what if more than one activity will share same tail event? So in this case, minimum will be the R correct value. To understand this, let us move to our network diagram. The first step is compute the latest allowable time for the last event, which will be equal to the earliest possible time at that event. So in this example, the last event is 9 for which earliest possible time is 21. So latest allowable time will also be 21. Now we'll move backward one by one. So L8 will be equal to 21 minus 2 equal to 19. L7 will be equal to 19 minus 1 equal to 18. L6 will be 18 minus 4 that is 14. L5 will be uh, 14 minus 4 that is 10. L4 will be 18 minus 8 that is 10. Now L3 which is common tail event of activity D and F. So the value of L at this event will be minimum from 10 minus 1 and 14 minus 5 which is equal to 9. Similarly at event 2 L2 will be equal to minimum from 10 minus 6 and 10 minus 1 and the correct value is 4. Similarly for the first event we will get L equal to 0. If you have not done any calculation mistake you will always get L equal to 0 for the first event. Here we have done the computation of latest allowable time. Now we can make an observation that at event 1, 2, 4, 7, 8 and 9 value of L and E are equal and the significance of it is path 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9 is the critical path and value of E and L at end event which is 9 in this example will be our expected project completion time that means 21 is expected project completion time here. By this we have completed our study for computation of E and L in network diagram. In case any doubt feel free to comment. This is Harish Kumar Patel and you are watching this tutorial on your e-studies. Stay on this channel, stay subscribed for more such content. Thank you.